it, it's rare that I feel like wounded by something that I see online. But the last time I felt very wounded yeah. was after I went to your guys' show and you guys posted some pictures with me and all your fans fucking hate me. No. <laughs> yeah. oh, That's yeah. just... <laughs> you, I'm sure you noticed. I mean, it was so overwhelming. I definitely noticed. I you said, must have noticed. I said, Tom, have you posted your pictures yet? I take the ones that Kimmel out. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be wise. There's just, there's this, like, you know, group amongst fans that are always the loudest. Yeah, I know. It's only... Yeah. And I, I don't understand that perspective from Tom Segura. I also get the feeling Tom Segura doesn't realize why a lot of fans don't like him. He probably thinks it's their problem, but it's like there should be a bit of a special power that you should have as a content creator where you know why people don't like you, but you don't try and change it because it's part of why people watch you. But you're aware of why people, some people wouldn't like you. It seems like some of these guys have no idea. And it's to me pretty easy to pinpoint especially with your Tom part of the, most of the hate I see coming towards Tom especially on his own subreddit is mainly because your mum's house as a show has really dipped in quality it's not as funny as it once was now it could be argued they could never go back to that period in time because maybe they were really funny back when we loved your mum's house because Tom and Christina P were struggling to come up in the industry quote unquote they were you know on the at early stages of their career so maybe what they found funny then and their sense of humor in general was just completely different to who they are now at the moment that could explain partly why the show has suffered over the years and maybe they've been spread too thin they've got too many pods they're appearing on too many other shows they're doing too many other projects they've got a big family there's lots of reasons why the show has dipped in quality but that's the main reason why a lot of fans don't like Tom Segura and obviously all the other shit that he does right all the other um, not so trolly stuff he does about being rich and all that stuff and taking the piss out of his fans but that's a pretty easy thing to kind of pinpoint and the, the diehard fans of your mum's house are still hoping and wishing that they're going to turn it around which they won't so that's why they keep tuning in so you should be attuned to that I think you should be aware of that a little bit but it seems that like Tom Segura isn't yeah. like 95 98 percent yeah yeah <laughs> but they're but they always you know the people oh, well there's an idea i think that like somehow i betrayed this group of men that yeah uh, in comedy like somehow i was the man but i was always a again what a weird perspective he has on himself he thinks the reason why people don't like him is because they felt betrayed that he sold out or something what don't people mainly not like this guy because of his like weird covid response and how much of a npc he is isn't that most of the to do most of the reason why people don't like this guy it's not anything else it's not really that deep why is he making it seem like people aren't fans of him because he was some sort of like underground comedian he was like a pe man of the people and then he sold him sold his soul to these big platforms and stuff and lost his way that it's not the case brother it could be argued no one ever liked you in the beginning it could be argued exactly like this exactly always yeah. but now, you yeah, realize but the that the content any, of the show is that, different but that hate that like a hate that goes your way is because you like stood up for uh like health care like they're just nah that's oversimplifying it he was again i understand why he said what he said because at the time when covid was rampant and people were literally dying it was pretty wild to hear other people say, hey, I don't believe this. This is all made up. Masks don't work. The vaccine is a myth. They're rushing it. All that stuff sounded insane to say back then because everyone was dying. Everyone was scared and stuff. So I understand why he was emotional and he came out and said some wild stuff about people should die and no one should get certain things. I think if, any, if I'm not mistaken, didn't Kimmel, wasn't there a subreddit? Do you guys remember the subreddit? There was a subreddit where they had people post people who were like COVID skeptics and when they got ill and they would post up clips of them, like pictures. So they post up a post of somebody who was a COVID skeptic or like, oh yeah, the vaccine doesn't work. It's all a myth and stuff. And then it'll be like, you know, the next slide will be a picture of them in the hospital with tubes coming all out of their body and shit. Do you remember that? I swear he mentioned that on his show. 
it's a fairly dark subreddit, but there was a subreddit that exists where people would literally like be laughing at people who were getting ill and didn't take the vaccine and sort of like dancing on their not even fucking, you know, dead fucking bodies. So that was what people got annoyed by. That is a bit more insane. That's a bit more intense than just being like, hey, you know, make sure you get vaccinated. Don't be dumb. Wear a fucking mask. He was being very aggressive with that whole thing. So you can understand why a big portion of the population was like, okay, get fucked get fucked you're meant to be making me laugh on a saturday night you're not meant to be giving me lectures about what i should be doing with my body and all that malarkey i think that's why people don't like you brother but i could be mistaken big up tom segura for trying to simplify it by the way and i love this thing because jimmy kimmel is more of a tom segura type celebrity that's why you can see he's the one sucking him off more Tom is definitely more of a fan of Jimmy because I guess Tom probably sees himself more as somebody who could emulate or maybe one day replace Jimmy Kimmel. He did that whole show he did, right? Where it was like a mock sort of like sketched late night show thing. So that's why he's like, you know, trying to cope and give him all these reassurances. And Birch just sitting there all red faced, not really interrupting for once. You could see that, um, Jimmy Kimmel is definitely somebody Tom looks up to. Mad that you actually used your platform for something good that offends them for i don't whatever. know if it's that i think it's I, I i think it is um you've busted trump's balls yeah i think they're well that's part of it but you know i think they you know usually people like busting balls in general whatever it is but i think what it is is there's this idea that i somehow made an adjustment in order to be part of hollywood oh yeah or something yeah. yeah which is just really not true and also that i have some kind of some level of like political correctness I love how he says he didn't make an adjustment to make it Hollywood so people shouldn't be annoyed with him. That's actually worse. That means this is your true authentic self and people still hate it. It's not even, he's basically saying I'm not fake. I'm not fake. I'm not trying to pretend to be someone I'm not just to make it. This is who I am. Well, people, st people actually hate your authentic self. That's actually worse, brother. And well, obviously there are things I care about or whatever, but when it comes to comedy, I don't care what anybody does. I mean, I don't. I, I have. I've never criticized another comic for what they. What they never mm. and never. Mm, I have extra doubt on that one. I think if we did a bit of digging, we could probably find something he said about a comic. I bet you we could find some disparaging things he might have said about Shane Gillis when that whole cancellation happened. And I have a feeling. I don't know why. But I feel like I remember seeing him say something kind of racy about Ari Shafir when he made that horrible joke about LeBron James. Sorry, about Kobe Bryant passing away. Not LeBron James. Touch wood. I think there are examples already there of him being, you know, a little bit of a um, of a humor police officer, right? Of a humor narc, of a comedy narc, of a comedy fed. I think there are examples of it. So I think he's waffling here. So there, the, but you think they? that the the that hatred for you is illuminati based like that you have they think i'm in the illuminati yeah yeah no i don't think it's even that deep i, th I don't think i think there's a pretty small percentage of people that actually believe there is an illuminati and if there is i would love to be a part of it i well, really would oh but there is that, there is yeah. and they are black they believe <laughs> that, like <laughs> have you seen did you see i did i don't know if you've seen that i did a clip where i had um it went completely viral i was had i had duncan trussell on and we were talking about all this, like, you know, behind the scenes Hollywood stuff. And I just very genuinely, genuinely <laughs> said. Bert's definitely been on the booze, isn't it? Bert's definitely been on the bender. When's the last time you seen Bert drink water? I don't remember the last time I seen Bert drink a glass of water. He's definitely been on the bender, isn't it? Imagine being Bert Kreischer, right? Again, I don't give a fuck about Jimmy Kimmel. I never watched the show. I don't care anything about it. But imagine being Bert Kreischer. And having a guest like Jimmy Kimmel come on Two Bears One Cave and you still get fucked the night before, you come over hungover and you're guzzling water to try and level yourself out and to sober yourself up a little bit. You probably stink of booze. You probably look like you've been sleeping in a bar. Can you imagine having no sense of like self-control, even for that one day, just so you can put your best performance on for Jimmy Kimmel and maybe tap dance for the Hollywood elites? It's pretty wild, isn't it? Completely viral. I was had I had Duncan Trussell on, and we were talking about all this like you know behind the scenes. Like he's drinking water. I don't think I've ever seen a video of Bert drinking water. I don't think I've ever seen it. Fair play, man. Fair play. Hollywood stuff, and I just very genuinely genuinely said, you know, to get my first special, I didn't have to do anything sexual, but I had to let a man perform oral sex on me, 
And, you know, and then uh, he took me to a red room and, and Duncan's like red room, red, it's always a red room. And then, and I talk about how, you know, and then I got a commercial agent and I got a special and, you know, it was just like this slightly sexual experience, but I didn't feel violated by it. And then he talks about how he had a dog ejaculate in his mouth. And then that's how he got his show and dude, black Instagram ran wild with it. <laughs> they, they reposted it. A hundred thousand times. They're just like, this is how dark Hollywood is. So if they... Talking as representative of the black community, I neither find that funny, humorous, or worthy of a share. And I'm hu highly doubtful of its impact. Highly doubtful. But again, I'm not African-American. So in some cases, I don't count as black if, you're, if you listen to Joe Budden. But I press a huge caps lock extra doubt on the way he spun this story. They thought that I did that and they see your career, they know you're doing that. Well, in a way, it's kind of a compliment. Like the idea that somebody would give me a show or anything really because they wanted to suck my dick <laughs> so yeah, badly yeah, yeah. is yeah. inherently preposterous. You know what's crazy? Every celebrity I've ever met, I thought wanted to suck my dick. <laughs> Elliot Gould, <laughs> Jay Moore, yeah. every fucking Will Smith. Will Smith. Yeah. Well, every, every time I was like, all right, there's something. Yo, he looks terrible in it. He looks so bad. I know you can't see it in this particular video because my quality of the things that I put on my streamable is really low. Let me see if I can lower the video size. Maybe increase the quality. No, let's not increase the quality. Just, just look at let's look at it. Just look at that frame. Look how red he looks. Look at that. He looks horrendous. He looks so so bad. Look at that. This guy's got all of the alcohol is just sitting behind his nose, sitting behind his eyes, just wobbling around there, gurgling around there, sloshing around there. Like, God almighty, bro, he looks horrible. He probably stinks bad as well, IRL. God almighty, Bert, man. Couldn't you just lay off the booze for one day when Jimmy Kimmel was coming to the studio just to kind of hang out, shoot the shit? I'm sure he's used to it because he's a Hollywood guy and, you know, a lot of those late night TV show guys like to get on it themselves. So maybe it's not, you know, not that crazy. But at least, you know, put your best foot forward, brother. A little bit. Maybe. Something gay going on here. <laughs> Why do you, you want to go out to dinner? Okay. Especially Elliot Gould. I thought For I was sure. shocked he didn't kiss me. <laughs> at the end of the night, we went to seafood down in Venice and he was like, well... It was a great dinner, and I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and he just left, and I was like, what the fuck? I was blown away by two things. He didn't kiss me, and I drove him. Yeah, he's definitely got that voice of someone who's been in a bar as well, isn't it? He's definitely got that bar. He's definitely got that voice of somebody who's been in a bar all freaking day. All freaking day he's been in a fucking bar. Hear that sound of his voice? Listen to that. Listen to that. I was blown away by two things. He didn't kiss me. I was blown away by two things. He didn't kiss me. God damn it, Burt Kreischer. I drove a more expensive car than he did. And I was like, <laughs> God damn it. Like, what, what's wrong with my... But with Will, you definitely thought something gay. Uh, I thought that Will wanted to fuck me. Yeah. Well, he probably did. I mean, who doesn't? Thank you, Jimmy. You know? Thank you. You were younger. Yeah, it was good looking. Mm -hmm. That was like my prize fighting days. Yeah. <laughs> the um, There is a thing where, where people want... They almost want to isolate. You've changed. You know, like, you've changed. Yeah, I remember there was a great comic. Of, of, it was Tosh, I think. They were like, people think I've changed. Yeah, I have changed, and I'm better. Yeah, I don't know. These cops are bizarre. Yeah, big up homeless cat. Well gone, homeless cat. Hope you're good, brother. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? Bang your fucking chest, brother. These cops are weird because most of the changes people complain about, I don't know. I think comedy podcast fans are pretty reasonable. They don't really ask for much. They just ask you to be funny. They don't really seem to be even that pushy about content. If you don't drop for a while, they seem to leave you alone. They might be a bit overly familiar in your comments and your replies, right? A lot of comedians have like annoying reply guys and shit. That might be annoying. But for the most part, they're not that demanding. Unless obviously you set high expectations, you've got to meet them. But for the most part, all they want to do is laugh. Regular people doing whatever they do, regular people do. They just want their entertainment. They want it to be funny. They don't want lectures. They don't want, you know, TED Talks. They don't want motivational speeches. They don't want, you know, political chat, societal chat, philosophy. They don't want any of that. They just want you to be introspective and funny. Maybe some vulnerability there from the time to time. 
but these guys don't do that they sometimes for some reason again i would love to know what the correlation is between people becoming successful and having a successful podcast having a successful stand-up career and then automatically thinking that everyone wants to listen and hear them pontificate about topics that they don't know about or they don't they're not informed on in any way shape or form i don't understand that correlation why you would think because people like to see you tell jokes on stage now they're just dying to know your opinion on fucking you know palestine israel like not really brother not really you know not really just make us laugh if you don't mind and he's like and i and i never liked who i was before <laughs> and i and now i'm getting better and i like this guy but like that's a great angle for him too oh totally so him. Yeah. yeah but it, it, it they want to like they want they want i don't know it's a weird thing I don't, yeah i don't know you can't Anyways, there you go. Um, neither, neither person in the room understands why they're not liked. Neither person in the room has any understanding why they're not liked by their own fans or by naysayers. I sometimes think, I think it's probably more important. I think, right, this is just my opinion here. Bear with me while I flip in, tell you my opinion. Actually, I need to check this, take this out, by the way. I actually think it's way more important as a content creator or as a comedian to find out or to figure out why your fans don't like you why your fans maybe sometimes get annoyed with you as opposed to your haters there's actually more of a utility to know or to figure out why your fans don't like you why your fans can sometimes be annoyed with you then maybe your haters but i think a lot of these guys have been consumed by and brainwashed by rogan and his stance that no one should read comments i think maybe rogan's one of the only people who probably shouldn't read comments i don't think it's beneficial for him to read comments really and truly he puts out so much content he's interviewing so many different people at the same time and he has his own very strong opinions it's not really going to serve him to read con con comments any if anything i think we get a far better rogan we get a far better show the reason why it's so consistent over the years is because he's so tunnel you know driven he's so tunnel driven and because he has his blinders on and because he's quite stuck in his ways, and because he's turning into a boomer at the moment now and he likes to repeat himself as we all do but i think the reason why he does that is because he generally doesn't read comments so he just generally doesn't know that he does repeat the same things all the time he talks about the same topics he has the same type of guests on some guests are quite repetitive and quite boring and whatever it may be and quite predictable i think he's somebody that probably shouldn't read comments but everyone else should everyone else doesn't have that luxury everyone else should have a understanding somewhat of what's going on out there how they're perceived again it doesn't have to inform what you do you don't have to change everything about yourself based on the comments but having no idea what people are saying out there about you especially with your fans especially these guys is pretty insane and then complaining about it and then getting annoyed when they have feedback it's also really odd this idea that if you talk back to these guys if you offer them any kind of constructive criticism they don't take it on board they take you as a joke they mock you and shit they kind of play with it they toy with the fan base they keep poking and prodding and if anything you know judging by what i've seen so far by covering stand-up comedians on this stream it seems like most of them would just much rather have a one-way relationship they'd much rather have a relationship where they give you content you consume it they give you merch you buy it they put on shows you come and buy tickets that's what they'd rather want they rather they'd rather have that one-way relationship where it's you just giving them stuff they don't want anything else from you zero they don't want to hear your opinion on stuff they don't want to hear anything from you that's probably what they would actually rather do which i think again is you know a bit of a folly considering the fan bases they have but i find it incredible that all three men who have very large hater bases have no idea why people don't like them <laughs> they don't get it <laughs>